Hey, welcome to another Enneagram podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yet another Enneagram podcast. But this one's different. Another Enneagram podcast is here to help you be a better leader for your team. We know leadership is already challenging enough, and it can be downright frustrating when your team communication breaks down. Another Enneagram podcast is here to tell you stories of leaders just like you who are learning how to lead their teams better with the Enneagram. If you want your team to communicate better, be more productive, and love their jobs, another Enneagram podcast is for you. Hey, welcome back to another episode of another Enneagram podcast. I got your host Ryan here today and uh, my buddy Cody. Cody, what's happening? Not much, man. Just, uh, Just hanging out. How are you? Doing okay. Wrapping up uh, another week here in Arkansas, and uh, everybody's getting ready to go on vacations and stuff for this next week, which is interesting uh, with everything else going on in the world right now. But, uh, you know, a lot of people doing some traveling, which actually is a really good segue into what I was going to talk to you about, uh, which was travel, right? So, um, favorite places you've ever traveled? Oh, my goodness. Uh anywhere in Colorado is just a good time for, for me. Um, there's, there's mountains everywhere. Uh, we used to go up there and go skiing all the time. And, uh, my wife and I went to a, a conference in Estes park, Colorado one time, and we drove into uh-huh. the city and there was no joke, a herd of elk crossing the road. And, uh, and so yeah. I just got, I got out of the car. I was like, I want to pet them. I want to ride them all the things. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just, um, that was super cool. And then, um, now that we live in Southern California, we've worked our way up the coast and, um, I think Santa Cruz, California might be, uh, yeah, it, it has, be- it has become a bucket list, uh, city to live in one day. Yeah. Um, just a mountain biking capital of the States and love it. So Dude, I'm just cracking up a little bit at the Enneagram seven, wanting to ride the elk that are crossing the road. Uh, I'm, I'm loving that. If I'm being honest with you, um, here's the, here's the deal. I've given up on my dream to ever ride an ostrich. So elk is the next best thing. So that's the next step down. I, I hear elk. ostriches are mean anyway, probably better <laughs> off with the elk if we're honest. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so. So, okay, that leads me to my second question, uh, which is going to introduce our guest on the podcast today, is in your travels and your encounters with other people and uh, and all that, what are your favorite accents in the world? Oh, you're talking to me? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, man, um, so... Somebody told me one time that uh, Australian, like the Australian accent, like a, like a true, not our interpretation of it, but a true Australian accent. <laughs> Wait, is, you mean Americans are bad at accents? Is that what you're uh, saying? Y- yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they told me one time that, that Australians were the only other person in the world who had like a redneck, like Southern accent. Um, okay. And so, which brings, like, which brings us to our guest today is... Um, um, so who is African. neither redneck or or no, no australian no, no, no. just to be clear but i was but i was going to say this on the podcast or before we started recording was that the south african accent is one of my favorites in the entire world and somebody told me one time that the the australian accent is just the redneck version of a like south african accent um, <laughs> and so i meant to say that earlier and i totally forgot but uh So those are two of my favorites without a doubt. Man, I hope you didn't just kill our chances at having like an Australian on our podcast at some point, but I guess we'll live with it. (laughs) So, well, yes, I'm with you there. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm with you there. Um, I I have a special spot in my heart for South Africa. And uh, and like you said, that accent is pretty cool. And so I think we ought to... Uh, introduce our listeners to that accent just so they can hear it for themselves. So yeah. today on our podcast, uh, we have a guest. Uh, her name is Jade Fetter. And uh, Jade, glad to have you here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Cody. It's, it's wonderful to be here and um, connecting over oceans. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Do you feel like we have played this up too much? Have we over flattered your I, accent? I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure <laughs> <laughs> and I have to go and listen to it just to make sure. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I will. It it, it will calm down. <laughs> okay. Well, just to you know, maybe it'll make you feel better. I know that like scientifically, no one enjoys the sound of their own voice, right? I think that's just like an agreement. You know, if you ever listen back to anything of yourself recorded, you're always like, "Good grief, what is wrong with me? Why do I yeah. sound that way?" <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think they kind of got it out of our system in our academy, though, because we had to do quite a few um, video recordings of ourselves, and then they played it back to us and we got feedback. And um, so I, I got to hear it quite a lot. And I think I think I've kind of got that out the way. <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah. Well, let's uh, do a little introduction here for our listening audience. Uh, Jade, tell us just a little bit about yourself, uh, kind of your personal background. Um, yeah, and then we'll we'll jump into some more in-depth questions. Sure. So um, I have actually come from a financial background, and through all of that, I I've always loved understanding why people do the things that they do, what makes them tick, what makes them function and have certain behaviors. And I got to a point where I decided that I wanted to study some more. And a friend of mine said to me, why don't you have a look at coaching? And I had no idea what that was. I think here in South Africa, it's, it's fairly new. The industry is fairly new. And I went on about a six month research spree, having a look at who could I study through? How does this work? What actually is it? And um, I got to Creative Consciousness International and I signed up beginning of 2015. And I've loved it ever since. It's my absolute passion. And then from there, I've just added methodologies or other modalities of work onto uh, the consciousness coaching specifically. So I added in the Enneagram, mm -hmm. I've added in kinesiology. So various different things, which I kind of put together in a holistic package. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so you're if you find your profile on LinkedIn, one of the things it says there is that you are a consciousness coach. So explain to us what that means. What is a consciousness coach? So it is a coach that creates awareness. Our methodology, actually what we do in every session is we give our clients what we call an awareness creation and that builds on their consciousness. So ultimately them becoming conscious of things they weren't conscious of before, and they can implement it throughout their life across all the different areas, whatever it is that they're working on, they can implement those awareness creations into life. We look at things like um, ex expectation and assumption and how the effect of having an expectation and assumption actually causes you to fall down into complaining, into frustration, and then how to get out of that. So our methodology is specifically working with a person's consciousness and creating awareness for them. Wow. Cody, what do you think? That's incredible. Like I, I, I love the language there. I love the, we spend a lot of time with our staff talking about awareness and um, yeah, just drawing attention to those red flags of when we start to dip into unhealthy aspects of our, of our, not just personalities, but just um, our life and our history and our development. And so um, the fact that there are specifically people who are coaching and doing that kind of stuff. I love that. That's, yeah. that sounds yeah. awesome. And I, I love that you said red flags, Cody, because that's exactly what we say to people to have a look at. What are your red flags that indicate this? And then they mm. know that when they see that flag, then they're going into an, a potentially an old pattern that they can actually now choose. Mm. When they've become aware of it, they can choose something different. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, I love that. I, I generally talk about it in terms of like a, a rumble strip. Like, I don't know if mm -hmm. that's what it's called in South Africa or not, but like on highways and stuff, if there's like a, a rough section, you know, on each side of the road. So that way, if you accidentally start to drift often off into it, you can, oh, you know, yes. correct. So I don't know what that's called there, but you could call it a, a rumble strip here, but it's kind of that same idea. Like, oh, when I start feeling this, that's a warning sign to wake up and course correct, right? Mm -hmm. Before you actually do some real damage. Yeah. So Absolutely. 
Jade, give us a, a little bit more insight into just what it is that you do. Um, who, what kind of people are you working with? What, what brings people to you for coaching? Um, so where I've been focusing recently is in the entrepreneurial space, business owners. Um, so almost in startup phase in sort of a year or two years into a new business, people transitioning from a, a career, you know, in being employed into being self-employed and uh, in sort of the executive leadership space. And it's all been in actual personal development. So I, I like to call it, um, I, I, well, I actually call myself a self-discovery artist. So them diving deep into uh, what is true for them and bringing out all the parts, unlocking the potential so that their performance increases, their leadership c capabilities increase, um, they become more effective in whatever that they're doing while benefiting personally through personal growth, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, keep going. <laughs> so, um, no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's, um, yeah. you know what? Everybody's doing Zoom calls these days. They know what it's like to yeah, talk over yeah. each other. <laughs> Nothing new there. So um, what what role does the Enneagram play in what you do? What I did was I wanted to add it in as a, almost like a step in to to coaching so somebody comes so the way i do it is actually self-typing and um they come in and we go through a process and they eventually eliminate the numbers and they get to their number and then from there once we've identified that and what is actually true for them through their Enneagram number, they bring that into the coaching sessions and we can have a look at how that then plays a role in potentially where they, where they are stuck, um, why are they challenged and how to then overcome that. Also having a look at whether they an unhealthy number or a healthy number and how do they then start to rectify that to create the shifts that they achieve their goals. Mm. That's good. Jade, how, how long are these, um, how long are you keeping your clients for? Like, is this a short term type coaching or are they, are they signing a contract with you for a, an extended amount of time or yeah. What does that look like? So what uh, it's 12 sessions. I call it a coaching cycle. So they sign up for generally 12 sessions. If it's something quick, then it would be six. Uh, and the Enneagram would be the starting point and then from their goal setting and then going into the coaching process. So it's, mm. and then I've had clients, once they finish the 12, then they start again on something different. So it's, it's really a, a nice, what I like to call it unfolding process. Mm. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about just your, Enneagram kind of journey. I know, um, well, I'll let you tell what your number is and everything. Um, but yeah, tell us how you first discovered it and what that's meant for you along the way. Okay. Um, I've got a show. I don't even know how I discovered it. I think my friend actually mentioned it at some point and I was like, Ooh, what's that? And I, I, you know, I kind of, I've, because I've added so much, the minute I hear something new, then I go and research and I have to add more stuff on. And <laughs> when I found um, that, you know, it's nine personality types and it has so much information and it, it can support you to learn so much about yourself was then what, what set me off into having a look at, okay, where can I actually learn to do this? And um, we have a company here called Inner Life Skills. And I was, I'm part of a networking group. And one of the ladies in that group was actually studying coaching through that. So she, it was funny how it's all just connected. And she was going to do the Enneagram self-typing course. And she said, come and join me. And I did. And I've just loved it. I think it's a beautiful way to have a look at who you are at the core. And um, just and I and I could see how I could just bring that in as a different layer 
for my clients to explore themselves. Mm. Have you seen Enneagram like, has it come uh, and impacted anything outside of your work? Like do you have friends and family members and whoever that are into it or is it pretty much just only in the coaching sphere for you? Um, it was actually more the networking group. It became quite a big thing in, in the networking group. None of my coaching friends were really familiar with it, except for now my partner that I'm collaborating with. She went and um, she did Integrative 8 Enneagram, I think it's called. And uh, she loves it. She loves it now. It's like everything. And <laughs> she always tells me, Jade, remember that you need to do this and you need to integrate this. Um, <laughs> so it, it was very strange at one point because nobody really was like, okay, Jade, you know, that's, that's, a, that's cool. But there was no dive deep into it in terms of my friends. They, um, they listened and there was nothing more, but the, in our networking group, it was, it's a big thing. They thoroughly enjoyed learning about their number and what that meant for them. Hmm. Yeah. So one of the things uh, over the last, I think three or four years, the Enneagram has become I, I would say mainstream, Ryan. I mean, what, what would you agree? Like kind of mainstream in the States in regards yeah, to. It's definitely a lot more popular. I mean, it seems like it gets more popular every year right now, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, have you seen that in South Africa? I mean, is it something that has that, that just people and just the general public have pop have culture kind towards? of thing? Yeah. <laughs> um, there are, there's like pockets of it. So if you get mm -hmm. to certain, um, I would say probably groups of coaches, then yes, there's definitely pockets where it's the thing. And as I, as I went through more coaching and I met more coaches, different types in our consciousness coaching sphere, there's, um, there's a few, but in other, I've noticed in other sort of coaching methodologies, so maybe NLP, there's more. Um, so it's it, yeah, pockets. And I, and I think it's getting bigger. I do think it's getting bigger. They run in the Enneagram trainings more often here. So you mentioned that you were uh, an Enneagram nine, right? So what has that meant for you personally? Like how has that been beneficial for you to know that? I think the, <laughs> what was, the funniest thing is, is the trainer said to me that a nine thinks that they all not all the numbers and um <laughs> they he obviously started at one and he went through and as he was going through all the numbers i was like okay i could be that one i could be that one and you know and i was just, i was identifying with every single number and then it got to a nine and i was like oh, absolutely that's i know that that's what i am and um I think the, the beauty in that was understanding those types of things, like why I would feel that way if that's actually typical <laughs> kind of then helps me to make sense of me. And the biggest thing was with a nine being able to either impact the environment or choose to not impact their environment, having that flow I think was the biggest thing for me because in a net, if I put myself in a networking space and I just started doing it at that point in time, very much introverted and walking into a room full of people that I didn't know was very, very scary. And the impact on me of that and understanding that that's how a nine actually gets impacted and that a nine can choose to go and, interact or to pull back and you know sort of be with themselves and having that knowing that I had that choice knowing that that was and I say this in inverted commas normal <laughs> mm -hmm. and not yeah. thinking that I'm actually wrong I, that I'm weird or that there's you know something wrong with me that I feel this way so, and it's a lot of different things about the nine, wanting to create peace and harmony. It, it makes me understand why I'm mediating all the time <laughs> between people. And uh, it, it's, it was a big eye opener. Yeah, yeah I love, love that. that. Yeah, there's, um, so here, here on our staff here, we have uh, 
three nines that I've worked really closely with closely with for, I mean, good gosh, I mean, eight years now. And uh, they started off as friends and then bandmates. And then now, um, you know, we're on staff together at, at this camp. And I tell them all the time that it's really, it's really beautiful to watch a nine go from that idea of peacekeeping um, mm-hmm. to then peacemaking um, because ma- peacemaking is kind of like a, a term of war. Uh, there's so much action that goes behind that, that term. There's so much action that has to be taken um, to, make peace in environments and cultures around them. And so, um, so nines honestly have been like a um, a challenging relationships in the past. Uh, But as we've kind of grown into this and developed this language using the Enneagram, uh, it's really, it's really cool. And I'm I'm so thankful to have um, so many of them around and uh, they do, they keep me grounded, but at the same time they're uh, I'm learning that they're a lot more disciplined than me as well. And uh, (laughs) when, when they're healthy and, and so that, uh, definitely inspires me. So it's really cool. So maybe this is a little bit of, uh, you know, Providence or good luck or something here, but you know, Cody, you work with a lot of nines, like you said, and Jade, you mentioned that you work pretty closely with a seven, right? So Mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a minute. What have each of you guys learned about working with the other, the other number? I'll let you go first, Jade. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so I think what I've learned is that I have to, have to, I say that lightly, give her the freedom to do what she wants to do. And then when I feel like, so for me, when it's going off track for the nine, then I can sort of rein it in a little bit and she gets me and she gets that okay, she's now stepped out into that very big wow space where she's potentially a little bit um, uncontrollable. (laughs) Sometimes the way she would do it is like she's a dog with a bone and she just doesn't stop. And, um, but we've, we've really created a beautiful balance because I ground her and she shows me how to be free. She shows me or ignites in me freedom of spirit. So it's, it's been this really, this balancing act between the two of us. And, um, and I love it. I, I th- mm. We work really, really well together because where I feel I may be lacking, she has it. And where she feels she's lacking, I have it. So mm. it's, it's been fantastic. I, I personally love it. I don't know about you, Cody. That's exciting. I love to hear that. Yeah. For, for me. So, um, 11 years ago, I stepped into a band with uh, a dear friend and, and we've been doing that for, you know, a little bit over a a decade now, which is, makes me feel old in some, some regards, but, um, but yeah, so we, once we stepped into the Enneagram, found out that he was a nine and then we ended up picking up a female vocalist who was also a nine. And then, uh, Ryan is married to a nine. And so I've had these people in my life for, for so long now. And one of the things that I've learned, and and you kind of hinted at it, is that for me, I can so easily escape into this, the what ifs, you know, the what could be's. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes I'll come into the office and I've been sitting and drinking coffee and thinking on ideas and, and I'll just come in and just, you know, dump hundreds or what feels like hundreds of ideas, um, onto Kimberly, who's one of my nine friends. And she has developed this or we've developed this, this working relationship where I can come in and, and um, kind of step into dreamland. And I start to notice that she starts asking me questions that are kind of chipping away and taking the ideas and, and kind of funneling them um, into something that is actually feasible and it's actually doable. And, uh, and then on kind of the, the opposite side of that is that, um, I had to learn pretty early on that um, we'd be in a meeting and I would share this big, big idea. And then I would look at Ryan or Kimberly and I'd be like, what do you think? Just like on the spot, like, what do you think? And they're like, uh, 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 you know, like they, um, because they process differently than me. And, and that was one of the things that was so beautiful for us to understand is that before a meeting, I would shoot them a text message and say, hey, today we're going to talk about A, B, and C. Um, and I want you to chew on these ideas. And so then when we came into the meeting, um, you know, we would be talking about A, B, and C, and I would be off on this space talking about all the 
possibilities of of A, B, and C, and they've come in prepared with, you know, some specific thoughts and things like that. Um, and we met each other in that space and, uh, and man, it has been so life giving. Um, and I liked what you said earlier when we were talking is nines are very grounding to me. Um, my, my wife is a six and when she steps into integration and, and health, she actually starts to pull these things from a nine. And, uh, and even in our, in my marriage, we've seen that, um, that some of those characteristics are so helpful for me. Um, on a daily basis. And so, yeah, sevens and nines, I think I, you know, we need more of them, right. More working (laughs) relationships with sevens and nines. So that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I know Cody, you mentioned something about like coming in and going into dreamland, right? Like expressing all these ideas. And, and that's one of the things I tell sevens a lot is to, to kind of designate a space for your dreaming, for your, ideas and storytelling because sevens can just like shoot out ideas and hopes and dreams like a fire hose, you know, all day long. And for them, that's just wonderful. Right. But for everybody else, uh, especially like nines and fives and some other similar numbers, like that can tire them out very quickly. But if a nine knows that they're going into a space that's specifically designated for that, then they can be like mentally prepared for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the other hand, and Jade, I'd love to know your, um, your thoughts about this. What I tend to tell nines, excuse me, what I tend to tell nines a lot is, um, to, or I guess rather people working with nines is rather than, you know, asking for something right now or what they think about this thing in the future to ask nines to observe what they've seen in the past. Hey, what, Mm -hmm. what are we missing? What are we not seeing? Um, what are, you know, lessons that we should be heeding in this and kind of giving, um, a safe space for nines to express opinions without feeling like they might upset something in the here and now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. How, how does that strike you? I, I think it's, uh, Absolutely perfect, actually. I haven't heard it expressed exactly in that manner before. And um, it resonates with me completely in terms of if I have to look at myself and I'm very reluctant to just put opinions on the table unless somebody says directly and asks me, Jade, what do you think? Um, I've I've gotten a little bit, I would say, um, better in terms of being able to self-express, but it is it is a challenge sometimes. It depends who's sitting in the room, how comfortable I feel, how safe I feel, how, and um, then being able to open up. So I think I think that's a, a beautiful ad- thing of advice to actually mm. give to people who are interacting with nines because I think often. Um, people get frustrated, very frustrated if I have a look at, and they seem to think it's, so I know we have that withdrawal. And um, I think they almost think that we do it on purpose. And it's, you know, we don't want to add value or something, you know, that's kind of where how I get that it might play out in their mind. And it's not that at all. It's so I think that's, that's brilliant advice to Mm. give to people. And nines also have that gift, you know, you you mentioned it earlier, but the idea of mediating and being able to see the perspectives of all the other eight types. And, uh, but with that gift comes sometimes the curse of thinking that, you know, a nine can walk into a meeting and think that my only purpose here is to mediate, or Mm -hmm. I could communicate the other eight types, maybe uh, thoughts or perspectives, but mine doesn't matter. And I've just, I've had to learn um, as being friends with nines, as, as leading nines and working with nines as um, trying to be, um, yeah, just quick to ask their opinion. And sometimes they'll give me the runaround of maybe some other people's opinion. I'm like, but what do you think? You know, tell me what <laughs> you think and how do you feel about this? And, um, and so I'm so thankful for the kind of bird's eye view and their mm. ability to see those other things. But um, for, for those of us who are working with nines, like we need your opinion sometimes, um, mm. and, and how you see things. So, yeah, absolutely. So Jade, let me ask this then, um, 
what value do you think the Enneagram has for teams and for leaders, just um, maybe from your own personal experience of working with different people? What do you think the value is of learning Enneagram stuff for, for teams and leaders? Sure. I think there's so much value in knowing who you have in your team, knowing um, what strengths they have specifically. Ultimately, then if you're looking at job assignment in the team, if, so, if you have a project of some sorts, who to go to for what, because you would know what their strengths are. So, and that, you know, we always have a look, well, we have a look at what flows, what, you know, do what works and put people in a position that will work for them. And when you know their number, if you know what their weakness is and what their strength is, you can keep them away from, from tasks or jobs that would um, activate a weakness for them and then they're not performing. And then you think they're just not performing as a staff member, which actually isn't true. It's just not what, where they should be. They should be placed somewhere else that where they, their strength will be highlighted and that will create flow for the team. So I think it's incredibly important to know how your team functions, to know your team on a level that you are able to, actually work together as a whole and everyone is using their strengths. Yeah. Well, that I can agree with that more. I love that. Um, which brings me to um, what is one of our newest and favorite segments. And in fact, this is going to be the first time we've ever debuted this on our mm -hmm. podcast. And it's really going to be more for if we release this in video. But you can see behind me here, there's a, a basketball goal. Yes. Right? And Cody and I decided that whenever someone makes a really great point, that I'm going to attempt to shoot this ball at that without <laughs> looking. So, uh, Jade, in honor of that incredibly great point. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, your point was better than mine anyway. So, uh, no, I love that. Um, I think that, that, that was, um, that's great. And I, yeah, like I said, I couldn't agree more on that. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Well said, well said. I, I, two things that you said that I'm, I'm going to steal. Um, you said highlighting strengths and activating weaknesses. I like, I like those two phrases. Um, yeah. cause I don't think anybody wants to come into a job and is constantly thinking about their weaknesses. It's not something that we're just walking around in, you know, we don't, a lot of times don't pay any attention to them until they're kind of activated, like you said. And so um, I know I've been in jobs and this was before Enneagram language came into my life where I kept getting these tasks and I'm like, why can I not do this to yeah. the, to the level um, that I've been asked to, to, you know, to execute here. And, uh, and it's just frustrating. And so to have a leader or a coworker who's willing to uh, work with you on that, and mm -hmm. to put you in a position to succeed and to win. Um, yeah, that's a game changer for sure. And so knowing those things, knowing that for somebody like me is, uh, you know, highlighting the strength of, of bringing ideas and creativity to something um, versus putting me in a file room um, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, I appreciate things like that. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And at the end of the day, the business benefits. If a team is working, the business benefits. There's productivity, yes. there is effectiveness, efficiency. Um, and that's what you want. That's what you want. So good. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. But before we do that, I've got kind of a lightning round uh, of questions for you. Okay. So you ready okay. for this? All right. Short answers so. as quick as you can give them. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. First question, favorite food? Italian. Just any kind of Italian food? Any kind. Any kind of Italian food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, best leadership quality in people? Um, strategy, strategic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Favorite thing about South Africa? The Kruger Park. Okay, tell us about Kruger Park real quick. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like my little bubble. I love it. Um, it's just animals. We have the big five. You, it's, it's 
I don't even know how big it is. It's, just, it's very big, apparently. If you compare it to like the UK, it's bigger than the UK, as far as I understand. And um, we have camps, so there's no there's no Wi-Fi, there's no TVs. There's it's very very basic in the camps. You do get the private uh, game lodges, which are a bit more. But just from so many childhood memories, like when I drive in the gates of the Kruger Park. It's like everything else melts away and I'm in this beautiful little bubble where I can go and look for animals and um, just just be. And that for me, there's, there's nothing like it on this planet. Well, that's awesome. That needs to go yeah. on the bucket list right there. <laughs> uh, give us a random tip for success. Employ grit. Employ grit. Okay, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, I got. I got to know what that is. I want that on a T-shirt. I mean, yeah, <laughs> man. We're gonna start selling merch for this podcast. <laughs> don't know how. Don't know how good I am at these random things. Okay, so um, basically, I think if I look at what has supported me, it's I would call it grit. Like really, just committing and doing. And um, when you employ that in your life, I think you can achieve anything. Mm. I love yeah. that. Have you ever seen uh, the movie True Grit? I don't. I, I, the name rings a bell, okay. and I very possibly could have, but just, a while uh, ago. Just look that one up. John Wayne okay. version only. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, I was going to ask because there's an old version and a new version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you're saying only the old one, right? Yeah. I mean, the new one's okay, but John Wayne, though. So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, favorite uh, television show or, or film? Oh, goodness. Film, Man on Fire. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world in history, who would you have a meal with? Oh, my goodness. I have no idea. <laughs> First person that comes to mind. This is terrible. Um <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. That's terrible. How can I have not a... Um... She's just not okay. a big dinner eater. Maybe yeah, that's the issue. No, no I, I love dinner. <laughs> I was going to say, what if, never, what if like, it was breakfast? I've identified breakfast one person. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, okay, let's go with John Travolta. Wow. Okay. okay. John Travolta. That, I love that. I think he would be incredibly <laughs> interesting. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then last one here from me. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who is exploring the Enneagram? So not knowing their, their number, just exploring. Sure. Like getting into it mm -hmm. kind of uh, for the first time or maybe just somewhat new to it. Um, to be open-minded, to have a look what fits and what doesn't fit and not go into any kind of making wrong of yourself because of that. Love that. Yeah. Cody, any, um, any additions to the lightning round questions from you? Um, have you been to the States before? No, I haven't. Do you have any uh, desire to come to the States? <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. loaded question, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is. There is some desire. I, um, I'm not quite, I don't, I'm not sure where everything is 100%, but um, there is definitely, I would like to explore some parts of it. Okay. So I'm yeah. a big break. And then, and then back to the food uh, talk is I'm a big breakfast person. Breakfast food is my mm -hmm. favorite. So what is like the signature breakfast uh, plate of South Africa? That would be probably baked beans with burros, bacon, toast, and tomatoes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my question then to follow that up is other parts of the world, that's known as an English breakfast. Hmm. Is, that, is that a lie? Is that actually a South African breakfast? 
I actually wouldn't know because I think we have a bit of both. So we, we have both, we have English breakfast and um, then we have, if I'm thinking of menus and they call it a South African breakfast, that is definitely Burevos on it. So I don't think that's, that's definitely not English. Okay, um, explain what that is. Cause I, Burevos. I'm lost on that one. So it's a, um, it's a sausage that they make with mince and um it's quite it's quite thick and they put it on a on a braai what we call a braai i think you would call it a barbecue and um they yeah and they they cook it on that so mm. and we get them almost in sausages but normally it comes in sort of a a long spiral and you put the whole thing on the braai and then you would cut it up into pieces huh okay yeah. so sausage all right. and mint all right <laughs> <laughs> so you you've hit on a couple of things here that was really the it's the last thing that I wanted to talk about um, before we kind of wrap everything up here is some different terminology uh, yeah. between here and there and other parts of the world. So um, the first one that you said was inverted commas, right? Which yeah. we would just call air quotes. Oh really? Right? Okay. Air, air quotes or yes. inverted commas. Um, barbecue, that's a controversial one, depending on where you are in the United mm -hmm. States, because, mm -hmm. uh, for some people, a barbecue is the instrument that you're using to cook on, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. for other people, and these are the people that will get in fights with you about this yep. barbecue <laughs> is a style of food with certain spices and oh, sauces okay. and, and things like that. Uh, and so you called it uh, a what? A braai. Bri. Bri. Yeah, okay. it's it's spelled B R A A I. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I have actually yeah. seen that a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So then I'm gonna try to come up with a few other things to see what you call them. So, okay. uh, what do you call the uh, the compartment on your vehicle where you would store things, not where passengers would ride unless they're being kidnapped? <laughs> a boot. <laughs> A boot, a yes. Boot. <laughs> that would That's be a trunk favorite. here. That's my favorite. It's a trunk, okay. Trunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about when you go uh, to shop for groceries mm -hmm. and you are buying more things than you can carry yourself, so you put them in a... Trolley. In a trolley. <laughs> a trolley? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. We Cody, what people, is it in California? We put people in trolleys here. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, we just call it a cart. That's, okay. I, that's yeah. Cart. A, I heard my wife buggy. once call it a buggy. Yeah, a buggy. Yep. Yeah. We call it a buggy. Um, uh, Cody, you mentioned putting people in a trolley. Uh, so mm -hmm. Jade, do you know what he's talking about? No, I have no idea. Unless you're doing something fun and like pushing them down a hill or something. No. <laughs> so she thinks you go into grocery stores and put people in your cart. Um, it's a random but, thing I do. It's super fun. So. What Cody's talking about is a uh, public transportation option that is usually on tracks that mm -hmm. goes like on the same street as cars. Okay. Uh, what would you call that? I think that would be, so we don't have those anymore. Mm. I think they were probably years ago, but I think it would have been called a tram. A tram. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've heard that or uh, a street car, you know, mm -hmm. is even another um, thing I've heard for it. So okay. uh, what about... What about the room in your house that usually has a shower, a sink, and another device that I'm going to ask you about after this? A bathroom. Okay, that's the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. okay so we well, I, the, no, there are other ones for that though. So, mm -hmm. what do you yeah. call the? You know, if we're not talking about the shower, not talking about the bathroom, <laughs> the other the thing in toilet. The room. <laughs> toilet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. so on that, there is, the, I would probably say the colloquial, um, I don't, maybe it's South African wording, is the loo. Uh -huh. the <laughs> That's loo. what I thought yeah. you would say is the loo yeah. or possibly commode. Uh, I've heard that oh, one. No, no. That I haven't heard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. What, what words do you think we are using wrong? Wrong? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who's to say who's right and wrong <laughs> <laughs> well if but you're american I, uh, then you say that americans are right uh, oh. <laughs> i mean that's pretty much how that works okay. yeah no no i'm i'm open <laughs> to it <laughs> so but i do have one for you that's come up and i think okay. this is a common one that people 
um, also get quite fascinated with is so when you're in your car and you're driving on the road and you stop at a those things that have lights what do you call them <laughs> so i have a guess for what you might say but i would call it uh, a stoplight mm-hmm. okay cody is that you call yeah. It a stoplight? yeah yeah just a stoplight okay. would you call it a traffic signal no we call it robots no. <laughs> robots <laughs> robots it's a robot yep i would not have got that one Mm -mm. (laughs) is that is that kind of a generic term to use that for other things or just the the red light the stoplight um no so it's for the whole the whole thing itself so whether it's green orange or red it's a robot that's awesome i'm gonna start saying i'm gonna start saying that (laughs) that's yeah so i'm leaving today with um trolley i'm gonna go to the store and grab a trolley next time and then uh here's here's the one i wish i could work into my just everyday diction would be uh, how you say process can you can you say it process yeah i, I think that's the coolest word like when <laughs> really? people yeah oh yeah like uh there's a show it, that I it makes you little. sound smarter when you pronounce it that way doesn't it's, it it really yeah. does <laughs> yeah 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 but i have no i have no south african accent so i'm just going to work that one in one day as we talk and be like yeah we need to work on our, our process process yeah i'll work on it i'll work on it so So here's, I was kind of laughing like we were talking earlier about something and I got in my head and was kind of laughing about this, but one of my favorite things to look up on YouTube is people from other countries doing an American accent. So can you do? Oh no, please don't. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's not gonna, (laughs) I think about the only thing that I could do is the the (laughs) y'all, but but no, it's not. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really not good with accents. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't feel too bad about that. Where I live, y'all is extremely common and it makes mm-hmm. me uncomfortable. I don't even, <laughs> I'm like, uh, that's not, I don't think that's a real word. Come on. I don't say, I don't say, I mean, I grew up on like a pig farm in Arkansas and I don't say y'all very often, but I do say fix into and people in California hate that. Like what I'll say I'm, to? So like, I mean, like if, uh, I don't know if you use this word in South Africa, but we would say something like, um, you know, I am fixing the sink or, you know, the sink is broken. So I am fixing yes. it. Yes. Um, but, but where I grew up, you would say, Hey, I'm fixing to go to the store. Like, like, is it preparing to, uh, or like getting, getting ready, ready to getting okay. ready to okay. yes. And people in California hate, they call me out on it every time. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like cody what are you up to today and i'm like oh i'm you know fixing to go on a bike ride they're like fixing to <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry it's it's oh. just it's the way it is so well thanks for joining us on words are funny podcast uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh we may have to run this segment as its own little piece somewhere i would i was just gonna say you'd have to create a whole new podcast for that <laughs> <laughs> yep invite international people over oh yeah that would be so fun that would be fun actually um well jade thanks so much for being a guest on uh, another enneagram podcast today and uh, (laughs) we appreciate having you on and just your insights on stuff um you made some great points even if i missed mine uh but but yeah enjoyed having you on here today if people want to uh, see what you're working on follow what you're doing, connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, definitely Facebook. So Jade self-discovery artist. I have my page there, same on Instagram. And from there, they would be able to contact me via email, cell phone. So all the information is there. That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cody, anything else before we sign off? No, I'm just going to, I'm going to hold tight to that self discovery artist i think that's a a really cool way to describe what it is that you do and hopefully what we're doing for um, the people we're engaging with with the enneagram so thanks so much jade it's been awesome having you on thank you both it's been a pleasure thanks jade i'm sure we'll talk soon absolutely see ya bye Awesome. Well, Cody, what'd you think of that interview with Jade? Man, it's just so cool to hear somebody's perspective from, I mean, literally around the world um, <laughs> yeah. and that, and that they're using, um, yeah, just such a, a great tool uh, to invest in leaders and business leaders and things like that. And so, um, so cool getting to talk 
with obviously someone with that accent, but then um, <laughs> somebody that's been trained and educated. And uh, I love that. Like the um, self awareness artist or self discovery yeah. artist is what she said. I think that yeah. that was so cool. Yeah. I've enjoyed talking to her. Uh, we connected uh, a couple weeks ago. We're in like a, a networking group. Uh, it's a global thing that we're both involved in. So I kind of connected with her through that. And yeah, she's just been really cool to, to talk with, um, not just with Enneagram stuff, but she's just been helpful to me in a lot of ways. So I appreciate her and appreciate her coming on the podcast and um, loved, loved the things that she had to say. So yep. any other thoughts before we wrap this up? No, man, just um, for those of you guys who are listening. Um, yeah, I think there was a, a, you know, a little bit of insight today into sevens and nines world. And so mm-hmm. if you've got, uh, if you've got any of those people on your team, uh, man, take some of those, uh, those thoughts that, that Jade shared and uh, yeah, just love those people. Well, lead them well. Yeah. Love that. Hey, if you're listening uh, and you like what you heard here, let us know, comment on our stuff on Instagram. Uh, it's another Enneagram. Also um, reach out to us uh, on, on all the social media platforms, all that stuff and, uh, and share stuff, man. If you like what you heard, please send people, you know, these episodes or, or tag them in our Instagram posts, whatever it is. And, uh, and then give us some, you know, reviews and ratings and all that stuff on, on social media and, and in the podcast world. I don't know where you're listening to this thing, but we appreciate you listening and we will see you or you'll see us or hear us, I guess, on the next episode of another Enneagram podcast. Hey, thanks for joining us today on another Enneagram podcast. As fellow leaders, we know it can be frustrating when it seems like you always run into the same problems on your team with the same people. But leaders just like you are learning how to lead their teams better using the Enneagram, and you can too. So if you like what you heard today, we would love it if you would share this podcast on social media. And leave a rating or review wherever you listen to podcasts, preferably only good you know, reviews and ratings. That would be great. If you'd like to connect with us, you can find us on Instagram or at another Enneagram or head over to our website, another Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of another Enneagram podcast.